I'm Dan from Essential Carpenter Tools and today we're going to talk about routers and mandrills for centering the guide bush on a router. So if this outside ring is the guide bush, now I'm going to move it over and exaggerate a little bit and this inside ring is the cutter and it's just not quite centered. Now as you can see we've got more here, uh, more there and less here. So if that is like a quarter of a millimetre out, when you double that up, it's like half a millimetre out. So when you're doing worktop jigs and you want it extremely precise, you want everything in line. So it doesn't sound like a lot, but you're actually doubling it. So if you're gonna go in one way and if you turn your router the other way, you're gonna double the amount. So what I really like about this DeWalt router that I recently see at a show and look at now, the whole base you can move is is adjustable. So it's like self-centering because the base is loose. I'm just going to lower that, lower that out and that is now sitting now tightly around the mandrel. So now I can just tighten that up. Perfect. All my other routers, these are all preset and I've not found you can't really move them a lot. You can buy a uni base and put on there and then redo it. If it's preset, surely that means it's accurate from well, the get-go, as they say It should be accurate America. to get going, but I know full well, like, if you look on my Festool one here, where this the guide ring clips in, I've actually got a little bit of movement now. And a few times I've been struggling with the workshop jigs because I always go in, sort of keep the rad to the same place there, go along, I keep my hands at a similar place on both sides. But sometimes, like, a mount can be absolutely spot on. You flip it over the other way and it's out a little bit. Now that can depend on, you've got to get the jig right down, you can get little rolls on the bottom of worktop, so I've looked at all them issues. But, so I do like this DeWalt one for, not that I'd use that for worktops either. Right, so which one do you use for worktops? <laughs> oh, I, I, use, I use this one for worktops, but I recently acquired this one and it was only £150 and I really like it. The guide ring is much more solid like the others compared to my Festool one where it does wobble a little bit. But again, there's no movement on that unless I get a uni base. I've not used it for worktop, so I've only used it a few times for other, um, just different stuff. And it is a really, just a nice router, this one. Yeah, yeah. It's very basic, yeah. but it's just solid, nice, the heavy weight behind it. It's a definitely value for money, this one. So if you took all the labels off these routers, this one would probably be one of my favorites, and it is the cheapest at 150 pounds compared to the Festool one, which is probably over £500 now. So what's the wattage on that high cokey then, Dan? This one's 2,000 watts. Now, I know Festool make a much more powerful router, probably for worktops, but it's, I believe, in the region of £1,000. So that is, a, obviously, it's corded. You wouldn't go cordless on a big half-inch router, is that um, what you're saying? Hikoki do make a, a battery router, half-inch, and apparently, reading on Instagram, the power of it is unbelievable. It's really powerful for workshop jigs and for workshops on site where there's no power, we can just get straight out there. So my beef with this is that you're paying a premium to go cordless and a lot of the time, apart from the fact you've got to put that lead over your shoulder, right, that keeps the lead out the way of the cutter, doesn't it? Yes, it right? does. Yeah. So apart from that, most of the time when you're cutting worktops, at that stage when you're cutting worktops, there's power on site. I guess it's good for some of the bigger sites where there is no power. You don't want to train leads, don't want to train for, um, generators, or you've got to have um, drip trays. It's a nightmare, so you can get battery chops. So everything battery, the last thing was a router. Oh, okay. And now Hikoki have got one. The lads that are fitting them on the big site, you know, this is the big sites. Where yeah, yeah, got, sure, yeah. If the power's not on there, I don't just turn up. No right, problem. I don't know why they go. So you've got five routers on the bench here, Dan. I think for some people it would be worth you just running through and just saying, why do you need a different size router for each job? Because it's, it's an expensive item for some people. I think, can't I just have one router that does all the work? Well, um, so firstly, the, the main difference is a half inch and a quarter inch collet, which holds the cutter in. So when you're doing some heavy duty work, uh, work tops with a jig, you really want a half inch collet and a big heavy router. So would that be mortising and staircases you as well? You can do mortise locks it? with it, yes. Yeah, so it's like a powerful router then okay. to follow in the jigs. But then if you're doing some very light work like hinge jigs, where you're only going to go in three mil, nice little battery one, quarter of an inch collet. Um, so it's just nice light work, quick and easy 
to follow you, your template. So the, I see you've got the, the festival one as well. Um, yeah, and I bought this one again just before, um, just for light works really, like doing rounds on window boards. And sometimes I've got power, so I don't use a battery. I just thought I'd treat myself to a nice little, very lightweight one. So that's a cordless one there, Dan, as well, no, is it? This one's a corded version. It's the festival plug it. I understand. Yep, yeah, yeah. Lead there. So another good thing what originally um, sold Festool to me was you can have one lead, extraction units, and then you can plug that in, do some work, unplug it, plug your plunge saw in with a hose and carry on doing it. So. Um, while we're talking about dust extraction, then I noticed when you did your hinge jig demonstration video, you didn't use any. No, not with my little, no. So what's the story there? Would you say don't use dust extraction or what? If you can fit it on, but I've found with some of these, it doesn't actually, do, or my Festool router doesn't suck an awful lot of dust out of it. Uh, because it's quite open everywhere, it just seems to go everywhere. The All dust. over the place. So I've tried it on, especially with this one, you've got a nice preformed casing that comes around. But it doesn't, so it could be my vacuum, it's an older vacuum. Does it impede you when you're sort of trying to see what you're doing as well? No, with, with the dust extraction, obviously Festool's more expensive, but you get these just clip in so nicely, and that just pops in nicely there. You can still see what you're you doing. You see basically. what you're doing, it gets out of the way, compared to, the, I mean, this has got dust extraction units, but the way the Festool clips in, it's very nice. But this is six hundred pound. That's one hundred and fifty pound. So there is yeah. a lot of difference. Yeah. Of, you know, they've yeah. thought about all the little details. But sometimes on a worktop jig, you just want a nice heavy router to push through and cut it. Bit of grunt. Bit of grunt, <laughs> and then back him up afterwards. <laughs> <laughs> unfortunately. So okay, Dan, that looks pretty. You know, useful sort of run through the router side of it. What when it comes to cutters? Because I've noticed you can get like screw fix. You can get a little box of you know thirty cutters for. Not very much money. What do you think? Do you need to buy expensive um, cutters or what? I have bought some cheap ones before. Um, you only get what you pay for. So sometimes I've got some more expensive ones. Just depends what you're doing. If it's a bit of hardwood, I'd get a more expensive one. On the softwood, I've bought some cheap ones. Or if you're around someone's house uh, doing new doors, all of a sudden you're routing out and there's an unexpected nail that you soon find and ruin them. So it just depends really on what I'm doing and what cutters I've got. I suppose the other thing is then heat, isn't it, where a router cutter, it doesn't like the heat too much. No, exactly. So you can get speed control on these. So if it is going a little bit blue, you're in trouble, slow it down a little bit. But the other thing is sometimes don't go through in one go, like work tops. I'll probably do it in like at least four goes. Tear it on here, we can have it preset. So you can put, so this is on, it's just touching the workpiece there. And then you lower that one down. So you could do your router in, then you turn it, and it, it just gives you them stages of different uh, plunge settings. Then you turn it again, so you know exactly, if you was doing some like channeling and you didn't want to come out the bottom of the piece of timber, you know full well if it's on there, it's going to be at the required. So depth. right, so on that turret, you've got three different... Three different settings. So this is just for adjusting this up and down. When it's locked there, yeah. we, that's the first groove. Yeah. Then we turn that one again. And it's just gone down like five mil, so then we could do another groove. And then the final one could be, say, there. You come down and that could be your final one. So it's just a, a depth stop. Say this was like a door, for argument's sake. So if I want to cut a hinge into exact depth, I'm simply going to slide that. And that'd be, that's hitting the timber or the edge of the door. And then we can put the hinge in here and just slide our stopper down. This is all loose. Yeah, OK. And then just put the hinge in and it's just hitting that and lock that off there. Now what's that green, the little green wheel? For? These are just for micro adjustments. Okay. What I quite often do is I'll have the joint on the hanging side slightly bigger rather than too tight. So if the door swells up, you can come back and chop the hinges in. It just gives you a little bit of a get out of jail card. Oh, okay. And then you haven't got to clean the whole edge up because quite often new builds, I've had it wet new plaster, plenty of moisture the doors just swell up. Just put the hinge in there, slide that down, lock that off, and then when we re-plunge now and go down, that is now just, see it's just hitting the timber. Got it. Okay, so that's, so that's going to go to that exact depth of that, that hinge. That will be the thickness of, of the hinge. And I just want to show you one more thing, that uh, a nice little tip that a lot of people may not know about with worktop jigs. So if you can imagine this is our worktop and we're gonna be cutting along here, what you should do is, when you're doing the first cuts, pull the router 
along this back edge. So you can do four passes through the material really tight to, your, to yourself. So we're doing all these passes. Then the last pass, you do it the full depth of the cutter. So if it's a 40 mil worktop, I do a 40 mil cut and then you push it against this front edge. So then you can take one whole complete all the way through and you get one nice follow through. So that's your final that's trim. That's the final trim is you're just taking off one millimetre or so or less is, and you do it in one pass all the way through. Another tip is, so we just finished the cut there. And it's still, the route is still, still running. Going. So you turn it off. Okay. Then lift it up. Oh, okay, even when it's not running. Well, say it's still going, yeah. but lift that up, then out, rather, okay, than, rather than just rather snatch than it out. Leaving the cutter down, yeah. lifting that out, that is liable to catch. So that worktop jig, the guide bush that you've got in the worktop jig, is not the same width as that channel. Is no, if you can see here, we've got a millimetre or so. That's what it is, is it? Yes. So when you get so your guide bush for that jig, this does is it a, say what? It's a 30 mil, you use a 30 mil. Does it say it on there? 12.7, yeah, 30 mil guide. Okay, Most that's lovely. Most worktop jigs are 30 mil guide bush, 12.7 or 12 mil cutter. But yeah, always keep it towards yourself, get rid of all the excess, then the last cut, pushing it that way. And following it so along. don't be greedy with it and obviously everything has to stay exactly yes. where it is you can't move it around can you so no. what do you do once cramp it down yes you've got these little slots on this one cramp it down now once it's clamped down pull it towards yourself but again where i've got that little bit of wobble in this one i try and always keep the rep my up in the same sort of motion all the time on both just to help out so it's not an automatic process, you still require a bit of skill to it's, do it. Yeah, it's not easy work tops. I think a lot of guys that I speak to, it's always stressful because sometimes you get a little hollow behind them and the last thing you do, you just go in and it breaks out, new cutters, everything. It still breaks out and you've got like a three metre length of work top. And you... So I found that very useful, Dan, and I hope our viewers also did and uh, hopefully you'll come back soon and give us a few more top tips. Hopefully, Roger, yeah, <laughs> that's great.